Over a year ago, we introduced you to the Archon aircraft, which at that time was more of a one-off prototype or proof of concept, not made for production. And it got mixed reviews in the comments. So it's time to get you up to speed on where the Archon 2 is now. And the changes are something to get excited about. I don't know about you, but any opportunity for a photo with a cool looking aircraft, I'll take. And this one is really growing on me, especially with the new look and many changes. And hey, I couldn't help but see if I could in fact tow it home on the roof of old red F-150. There are a few more changes on the horizon before this truly gets into production, but I'm already wondering how this might look sitting in my hangar and if it could be the next official aircraft for the channel. I guess only time will tell. So last time you saw this airplane was at Oshkosh uh, about a year ago, and that was the Archon 1. Sitting beside me, behind me here, is the Archon 2. So we've got some updates for you today. All right, so Richard, let's, again, let's, lots of changes since last we saw this. We actually haven't seen this one yet. This is the number two, the two place. But what has changed metal-wise and fit and finish and kit-wise? So kit-wise, this was the first one we actually produced to find out if all the CAD models and everything else you know, fit together like they're supposed to. So we found the errors, um, you know, when you bend metal, things stretch, you know, location of holes, because everything is pre-drilled. Um, so in the process, we went through and cleaned up uh, the areas of intersections, the areas of overlaps, and made sure all uh, rivets are now um, where they need to be. Lightning holes didn't affect you know, hole placement. So everything on this airplane now is CNC cut. So all the, all the holes are put in by a CNC, the ribs are all done by CNC, and we'll, with, the new, with the production kits, these ribs will all be hydroformed. So every rib will be identical one after the other. Um, we're currently building the first flying SF-2 that is built, the whole airplane is being built from our actual production standards. So what we do with that aircraft that we're trying to get to Oshkosh this year uh, will be as the kit ships. So all the parts will interfit you know, the way they're supposed to and we'll have proper seams and joints that didn't work out when we actually started building this particular one here. And another thing that we had talked about off camera which isn't shown here is the controls and push-pull tubes. You've kind of re-engineered that as well. What's changed there? So the, one of the things that changed on the push-pull tubes, originally you saw the tubes were in aluminum. Um, now they're in 4130. This will stop that flex um, that you get with the aluminum. Um, and then there's also points back in, inside to help buffer the control. So that control, you know, instead of an eight foot long um, span, it's four foot instead. So it'll shorten up that throw that the tube can actually flex in flight. And one of the biggest things just visually that you see that has changed, one you can see from 10 feet the fit and finish has improved from the, the first original one. Correct. Yeah, but uh, today the biggest thing you're seeing is the canopy. What, what's changed? It's entirely changed. What happened there? So the canopy, the original canopy was um, you know, the, the Greek, des the gentleman who actually designed the airplane didn't have the ability to do the blown canopy. So what we've done is we found a canopy that actually works well, um, gives us plenty of room for the, the pilot and the co-pilot um, to sit in the aircraft with plenty of headroom, but it gives us that nice clean shape instead of that you know, um, squared off look of the original canopy. Um, as we go along, there will end up being a rollover protection bar here in the center. Uh, ultimately, that's going to end up being composite. Uh, it won't be attached to the canopy, but it will be underneath the canopy. The canopy is planned to tilt to side tilt. That's why we got the hand grab here, and then there's a ladder assembly that will go in here and be able to ease into the aircraft since the airplane sits at a you know, fairly high off the ground when, you know, when it's sitting on its gear. Okay, jumping back to the metal work for a second. This particular one shown here, and there's going to be some changes beyond this, this is now completely match hold. Correct. Right? You'll take it out of the box and start clicoing it. Put your clicos together and start pulling rivets. 
and uh, we'll, we'll do, I'll just roll over the, uh, we have a midsection um, put together for show and you can see how it, this airplane basically is just a big, a big wing. Um, even the lower section down here is an airfoil. Um, so basically the airplane is kind of like a biplane. You do have two, two sets of wings, you know, not just the main wing you see, but the, the area that a lot of people call the ducted fan area is also a wing as well. So it's a full lifting body structure. Okay, so going from the Archon 1 now to the 2, and, and really just waiting for production, you decided just to jump right into creating both before it really went into production. That and smoothing out a few things, correct? So correct. it'll be available still as a one or a two place. Correct. And, and the public actually has dictated the, the single place. We, surprisingly, what we found at Oshkosh is we have more people interested in a single place version than we did in the two place. Not the, not the norm. Who would have thunk? Right. Right. Yeah. It. Uh, so for the you know, the guys that are coming out of the military and they want to you know still be able to feel like they're flying something that is a fighter, you know, the t the single place will be available to them. So they do share common parts you know, uh, as far as the build goes, and we did that so the one we're not you know creating a whole bunch of tooling, and we should be able to keep the cost down for either aircraft. All right, Richard, so you said, uh, let's talk about the center section here and the construction of it. So basically the center section, the wing, so this is basically right where the uh, pilot, co-pilot are sitting when, you're, when it's flipped over. Uh, we've gone with the shear web and you know, uh, angle aluminum for the spars, and these will go throughout the wings, all the way out to the tips. Uh, the newest, you know, the, one of the changes we made is because we're trying to eliminate some of the overlay of, of the aluminum, and get cleaner seams, we now, this is now a T top instead of having just a single um, channel. But the advantage of that is, is we actually add strength to the aircraft. Uh, one of the things we're about to do is actually do the load test, you know, the sandbag test with the wings. That's coming up here shortly. Um, right now the rush is to get the, the first production kit assembled. Like I said, we, we want with all possibility to uh, show it flying at Oshkosh this year. All right, I'm gonna pop in here real quick to talk about our sponsors. As you know, I can't do this all on my own. We got to have somebody to help fuel that truck. We try really hard to work with uh, sponsors that provide a good service and a good quality product. So let's talk about those guys right now. Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com, the premier provider of glass panel avionics systems for experimental and light sport aircraft. Wide Open Door Company at WideOpenDoorCo.com your premier destination for high quality doors, including aircraft hangar doors. Warp Drive Propellers at WarpDriveInc.com, providing quality, solid carbon fiber propellers for many light sport and experimental aircraft. And visit our website at ExperimentalAircraftChannel.com for new videos and easy to navigate playlists and so much more. Speaking of fueling that truck, if you guys wanna join us on our Patreon page, become patrons of this channel, just search on Patreon for Experimental Aircraft Channel. Sign up at several different levels, so check that out. Things that's gonna be updated from the original Archon one that we saw over a year, almost two years ago, is the nose cone. You've yes. got a brand new nose cone and an option for a parachute. Correct, so we'll be using the, uh, should be using the Galaxy parachutes. Um, at this time, we're making debating on where this parachute needs to go. The fortunate part of the airplane is because we, we will have a new composite nose for this airplane, which will bring the um, roughly about six feet, I believe it is, um, in length. The reason for doing the composite nose is now we can put all of our antennas inside the nose of the airplane. So nothing has to hang out of the airplane. Um, the other side of that is, is it gives us the opportunity that we can actually put the parachute here. It gives us a place to actually retract the nose gear to as well. Um, so right now the debate is whether the parachute goes into the nose or back underneath the rear cover in what area we call the, we call the trunk, uh, which is this section back here just behind the rear passenger. Um, a lot of that's going to depend on where we, you know, where we find out our final weight and balance is going to be on the airplane. The airplane is being done with the, um, the 100 horse Zonson is the, the, the next one that flies. So 
For will that 100 for, horsepower be a standard? The 100 thing? horsepower will be a standard. You'll have the option to go to the, the larger engines as well. Um, and the, actually, the airplane is actually designed and meant to fly on as little as 80 horse. So, if, you know, whether you use the Zonson, the Rotax, you know, anywhere from 80 to about 145 horse is going to be that um, range of power. Now, another little change, kind of a big change actually, that you're implementing is on the landing gear. You said the nose gear, previously, it would go into the belly of the plane. Mm -hmm which is a lot of metal work, right. and now it's going to be going forward. We'll talk about that yeah, for a moment. It'll come forward up into the cone, and of course the mains will go up into the uh, body of the aircraft. Uh, one of the fortunate parts is, or unfortunate depending on how you look at it, it's kind of like the Blancas. You know, the gear comes up into the fuselage, but it's not fully into the fuselage. So if you do have that oops moment, um, damage should be minimal as you go down the runway. The prop won't strike the runway, the fuselage will stay off the ground, and the only damage you'll actually have will be within the nose cone itself. Um, yeah, you, you don't think that you know, you're never going to make that gear up landing, but let's face it, you, it's like motorcycles. Those who have and those you know, who will, um, sooner or later, you do it enough, you're going to have that misfortune. So the fortunate part is with the gear hanging out like it does, you do minimize any damage to the aircraft. And of course, without a prop strike and without doing any major damage to the airframe, it's a quick repair and you're back in the, in the flying. So going from a single seat to now a two seat option, was there a lot of work need to be done? Does this have to be stretched uh, to be able to accommodate? So the, the cabin area got stretched a little bit. Um, it wasn't a huge amount. We already had the room uh, with going you know, uh, to the road tax power, the Zonson power, uh, we, you know, we did have to take things back a little bit, so it did grow, grew a couple feet overall, but that allowed us to get that passenger space in. The, pass, the rear passenger is going to sit elevated uh, to help give a better view, because, you know, facing any time you have a low-wing airplane or mid-wing airplane, your vision from that back seat is limited. Um, you know, much if, if for anybody that's been in a long, easy velocity, or uh, very easy, you know, seeing out the back seat isn't isn't the best. So by elevating that rear seat, we give the folks who are on, you know along for the ride a better view. You know, and get to enjoy what's you know, what's going on outside the airplane. Will the controls be so. center stick or side stick with this one? The controls are all center stick. So um, instrument panel up front. We'll have a small pod panel in the back. So you will have the ability to have some avionics back there and the hopes are as we should be able to do transition training with the CFI in the rear seat. All right, Richard, so where could somebody see this in the flesh uh, this year at an air show or otherwise? So as far as the our air show schedule, we'll have this airframe at Sun and Fun this year. Um, not sure if this particular one will go to Oshkosh because the goal is to have the actual flying what will be our production aircraft at Oshkosh uh, with actually doing demo flights there. Um, so those are the only two shows we actually have scheduled with it. Um, of course, folks are always welcome here in the U.S. to come in, see, you know, they can come in and see this version of it or what we have here of it. Um, until we're into production, but right now production is planned for fall of this year. And it will be at that point to be in full production and start shipping kits. And what, what form will the kit be in? Will it be like an advanced quick build kit like you, you see here, or you have a lot of skeletal work to build in the whole thing? So right now the plan is to do this in an advanced quick build. Uh, so basically when you get it, majority of the fuselage structure will be together. Uh, much like a van's quick build, you'll just be adding in the skins, putting in the controls, uh, things of that nature, so we can stay within that 51%. Uh, depending on what happens and what all becomes a mosaic, that all may change. But at this time, we'll produce the kit as a 51% complete, is the plan. Uh, there's been talks of you know ship the whole kit as you do it all. Uh, but right now, from our marketing you know, the side of things, what we've learned is nobody wants to build the whole kit. They want it you know, somewhat pre-assembled for the most part. So you know, there's a few of us that you know, like to put in every single rivet, but for the majority of the country, yeah, most people would prefer the quick build. Richard informed me they would be building the next production kit at his facility here in Sandersville, Georgia. If you would like us to capture that build, here on the channel, blow up the comment section.